are looking at a live view of the Falcon Heavy on historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, awaiting liftoff at 6.35 p.m. local time. Welcome to our live webcast of the Falcon Heavy Arabsat 6A mission from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. I'm so excited to be here with you today, along with my co-hosts, bringing you coverage of the second launch of Falcon Heavy. It's the first Falcon Heavy launch carrying a payload for a customer, and tonight our customer is Arabsat. And I'm Alex Siegel. I'm a material planner here at SpaceX. We first flew our Falcon Heavy vehicle a little more than a year ago. It is the world's most powerful operational rocket by a factor of two with 28 engines, three boosters, three separation events, and three landing attempts, there's going to be a lot of activity happening all at once. The payload tonight is a geostationary communications satellite, which will provide state-of-the-art communication services to customers in the Middle East and Africa. Tonight's launch window is about two hours long, and we're planning to launch at the top of that window. If we're unable to launch tonight, our backup window opens up on Saturday, April 13th. We're currently at T minus 14 minutes and counting, and all systems are go in Cape Canaveral. Today, Falcon Heavy will deliver the Arabsat 6A payload to its intended orbit more than 20,000 miles above the Earth's equator. That's significantly higher than normal, which is why we're flying a Falcon Heavy. Now let's take a closer look at the rocket. Falcon Heavy is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means it can carry much larger payloads not only to Earth orbit, but to the Moon and Mars as well. Like the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is a two-stage launch vehicle. The big difference, of course, is that the Falcon Heavy first stage is comprised of three cores, and Falcon 9 only has one. Each one of these cores has nine Merlin 1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines overall, as you can see on your screen. Now, altogether, these engines produce over 5 million pounds of thrust, equal to 18 747s at takeoff. In fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't run them at full thrust all at once until after liftoff. For the mission today, each one of these three Falcon 9 boosters is brand new. It's also going to be the first time we are flying Falcon Heavy with our upgraded Block 5 cores, which feature more lift capacity, a beefed up heat shield, and other changes to make the boosters more reliable and easier to reuse. During ascent, Falcon Heavy will throttle its thrust up and down on both side boosters and the center core to balance aerodynamic and structural loads on the vehicle. About 70% of the way through the first stage burn, the two side boosters will separate and come back to Earth for a simultaneous landing at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on landing zone one and landing zone two. At this point, the mission will proceed just like a standard Falcon 9 flight. The center core will keep firing for another minute, then we'll perform a standard stage separation from the second stage. We will attempt to land the center core on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently stationed about 535 nautical miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. It's worth mentioning that for this mission, bringing back the center core is challenging. If we are able to land, land all three cores tonight, it will be particularly exciting. <laughs> The second stage is exactly the same as any other Falcon 9 flight. Tonight, the second stage will be sending our payload to geosynchronous transfer orbit. The spacecraft will then maneuver into a geostationary orbit more than 20,000 miles above the Earth's equator. Now, to put that into perspective, that's equivalent to almost an entire trip around the world traveling along the Earth's equator. Speaking of the satellite, it is safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed cone on the very top of the rocket. This protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Now, once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. While Mr. Steven, our ship, will not be supporting today's mission, we do plan to recover the fairing pieces from the ocean using our recovery ship's Go Searcher and Go Pursuit. And lastly, you'll notice the tall structure next to the rocket, which we call the fixed service structure. Its primary function is to provide passengers access to the Crew Dragon vehicle during crewed missions. But since we do not have any passengers aboard today's flight, the fixed service structure does not have a role to fill. Now let's check in on how the countdown is going. Good Thursday afternoon. I'm John Innsbrucker, the Falcon Principal Integration Engineer at SpaceX. We are T minus 10 minutes, 28 seconds, from the launch of the Falcon Heavy. As I like to say in my updates, 
The SpaceX team is working no significant issues and is on time for launch. Now Falcon Heavy rolled out to the pad with the payload early Wednesday morning and went vertical about six hours later. Now after yesterday's scrub, the vehicle remained vertical on the pad. The pad deck was cleared at about T minus eight hours to begin today's hazardous operations. Just before we began the webcast, the SpaceX launch director pulled the nine members of the launch team and got a go for both propellant loading and for launch. Now we're currently loading propellant on all three first stage boosters and the second stage. Now our propellants are an oxidizer, liquid oxygen, and a fuel, kerosene. Why did we pick these two? Well, obviously in space there's no oxygen needed to support combustion. So we bring our own as liquid oxygen. It's readily available and it supports efficient combustion. We chill it to get it as dense as we can in order to maximize how much we can load onto the rocket. Our fuel is RP-1, essentially a purified kerosene stage flown from this very pad on the moon missions used liquid oxygen and kerosene. Now on the spacecraft side, the Airsat 6A team began transfer to internal power T minus 21 minutes and just a few minutes ago they completed